some reason, I offered Dimitri <clears throat> a place to stay, my spare bedroom. Why I offered it in the first place, I have no clue. But the more I discussed details over text with Dimitri, the less I started to second guess myself. Sarah already knows, and she's here to walk things through with me. I have no idea what wire is loose in your head, but take it from me, Valky. This is still a bad idea, Sarah says with a serious expression. There are a bunch of papers lying on the counter. Sarah has been helping me out with legal stuff. Having a tenant and subletting your place sure has a lot of legal rules I need to abide to. Dimitri would like to sign a contract with me. I don't know, what's the harm? I've been thinking it over and the more I realize it's not so bad. It's not like you'll stay here forever and I get an extra amount of income every month. The steady amount of money each month sounds nice when I still don't even know how much my boutique will bring in. I still haven't officially opened yet. I don't know, Valky. You're inviting your ex's little brother to come live with you. I'm worried. I know, the situation is definitely unique in a sense, and I do have some baggage, but Dimitri hasn't done anything yet. I can't blame him for something Alex did, for example. I think I'll be fine as long as he doesn't invite over my ex. Then I think we would get along just fine. Besides, he'd be mostly at college anyway. It's not like we'd be together 24-7. You didn't even ask me if I wanted to live here, Sarah says, giving me a pout. Don't you have your own studio apartment in the city anyway? I point out. Yes, but think of how much fun we'd have together being roomies again. No thanks, college was enough for me. I'm tired of posing for your pictures. Sarah and I were roommates in college. She majored photography. While it was loads of fun that turned us into best friends, it was also tiring whenever she'd asked me to model for her pictures. Standing underneath a blazing hot strobe light to pose for three hours straight while Sarah just got the lighting just right was excruciating. Sarah rolls her eyes at me. Touché. The bell chimes and we look up. Dimitri squeezes himself through the doorway, looking around the place with curious eyes. When he spots us, he raises his hand halfway and gives me an awkward, an awkward smile. He takes a few long strides to catch up to us at the counter, pushing his hands into his po the pockets of his pants and able to keep his eyes from inspecting everything around him. <clears throat> Hello, he says politely. Dimitri, welcome, I greet him. This is my friend Sarah. She was with me when we ran into each other before. Sarah, this is Dimitri. Hat boy, Sarah says dully. Dimitri raises his eyebrows at her. I elbow Sarah in her side. So, um, welcome to my boutique. This is the front of my store. You can get to the staircase leading to my apartment through the back here or through the back door. I usually go through the front door since it's easier. I point Dimitri towards the back where my workroom is located and also the door leading to the staircase. Oh. Your store looks really nice, he says with a smile. You two did this all by yourselves? Through blood, sweat, and tears, says Sarah with a deadpan look in her eyes. Mostly blood. Sarah, I hiss at her. She's not going to make it easy for Dimitri, is she? I give Dimitri an unapologetic look. No, not exactly. I, hi I still hired some contractors to do some of the heavy labor around here, but Sarah helped me a lot, though. Sarah snorts loudly and gives Dimitri a judging look with her eyes. More than you could sit. I quickly place my hand in front of Sarah's mouth to cut her off. I glare at her. I'm getting fed up with her attitude. How about I show you the room? I ask Dimitri. Dimitri simply gives me a lopsided smile and nods his head. Sarah, you stay put, I warn her. She rolls her eyes at me, then crosses her arms and leans against the counter. Have fun with Catboy. I start pushing my hands against Dimitri's large, large back to guide him towards the workroom. When I close the door behind us, Dimitri faces me with a pained look on his face. Did I say something rude to offend your friend? Oh no, you haven't done anything wrong. Sarah is just a bit jealous that I didn't offer her to stay at my place, but I did offer it to you. I won't mention that she's also worried about me due to the fact that she's that he's Alex's younger brother. Ah, he exclaims, a smile appearing on his lips. So that's it. I was really worried I did something to anger her. I return his smile. I guess Dimitri is really sensitive to how people perceive him. He's not a bad guy at all. Sarah has got nothing to worry about. I push open the door leading to my staircase and we both enter the hallway. I point towards the back door. You can also enter from here, but you're welcome to enter through the store if it's open. I don't want to disturb you or your customers, he says shyly. It's okay, you won't frighten my customers away, I pause. Unless you come home wearing that cat costume again, that might freak them out. A blush spreads across Dimitri's face and he averts his eyes away from me. Please forget I ever wore a cat costume. I promise I won't step foot out in inside your store or anywhere near it, ever. I grin at him, then start walking up the stairs. 
We reach my living room. It's still sparse with a few pieces of furniture here and there, but at least I've got a couch to sit on. This is my living room. Feel free to lounge around in here if you'd like. I'm usually working anyway, so you may not see me around much. Mm. You sound like a busy career woman, Dimitri remarks. Who said I wasn't, I joke. <laughs> Dimitri chuckles softly. I'm going to have to work pretty hard since I'm opening up Olympus in a few days. Oh, I get to be here for the opening? Front row seats. You get to be here for all the exciting milestones. I say with a giggle. I hope everything goes well then. The store certainly looks really nice. Dimitri compliments me. We both move on to the kitchen next. This is the kitchen, a little bare at the moment since I've only been living here for a couple of months now, but it's got most of the stuff you need to cook with. Dimitri starts opening up cabinets and familiarizing himself with my layout. So, how good of a cook have you become? I decide to ask, a bit curious. I know Dimitri was into baking cakes, but I'm not sure how it panned out a couple years later. It was one of the initial agreements. He'd cook and clean around the house in turn for a much lower rent. Okay, if she's like cutting the rent by a lot, she's still not making him pay like 300 to 400. I'd say that's fine. I've become pretty decent at it, but I'm better at making desserts. I like to try out new recipes in my free time, he explains with a serious look on his face. What about you? Oh, um, I guess I'm alright. <laughs> Dimitri chuckles. What's with the question mark at the end? Are you not confident in your own skills? I usually don't really have time to cook, so I end up ordering takeout instead, I admit. <laughs> well, I guess that'll have to change. From now on, you'll be eating home-cooked meals. Dimitri leans against the cabinet door, a dimple appearing near his mouth again as he smiles. I feel a little weird to see him more grown up like this. I know he's barely started college, but he looks and acts like an adult. He's always been more mature than his age. I start to wonder how eating home-cooked meals with Dimitri will be like. I show Dimitri the other parts of my home, including the bathroom, and we finally reach the spare bedroom. The guest bedroom is adjacent to my bedroom, and a little smaller, but still spacious. Right now, it's completely empty, save for a few boxes I placed in there for storage. So, this will be your room. You'll have to purchase a bed yourself, though in the meantime, I do have a blow-up mattress you can use. Dimitri walks around the small room and looks out the window overseeing the shopping district. The sunlight hits his face and he shields his blue eyes from the bright rays. He takes a few more looks here and there, then turns to face me. Oh. This is perfect, he says with a grin, and no worries about the mattress. I'll just take my bed that's over my parents. I'm not going to be living there anymore after all. Right, what do they think about this? I ask in a more serious tone. Does Alex know about it? That's what I'm most curious and worried about. Dimitri looks towards the ground. They know I found a place in the city, but they don't know it's you. He shyly scratches his cheek. <clears throat> I hope that's okay with you. I don't want to start any drama or anything. I breathe out a sigh of relief. No, that's okay. I prefer it that way. So, any questions? I ask, changing the subject. Um. Yes, um, does anyone else live here? Like, another roommate? Boyfriend? <laughs> he trails off as he shuffles as he shuffles his feet. I shake my head. Nothing of the sort, just you and me. I don't really want to tell Dimitri that I've been single ever since I broke it off with Alex, especially hearing that Alex already found someone else, but I didn't. Kind of makes me seem pathetic. Dimitri breaks out into a smile. Though so you'll be taking care of me. There's an... That's another way to phrase it. I'll be taking Dimitri under my wings. Hmm, yes, but you'll be the one cooking dinner, so you're kind of taking care of me as well. I'll give you a monthly allowance to do the grocery shopping. I hope it won't interfere with your college too much. <sighs> Should be alright. I'm a fast learner, so I don't study that much. I should have some spare time to kill. Dimitri's blue eyes suddenly look into my own. His gaze is intense, but also warm. I smile in return, knowing Dimitri is at least nothing like his older brother. Especially now that Dimitri grew up so tall, Alex was on the shorter side. By the way, when did you grow so tall? I voice my thoughts. His shoulders shrink into his body and he gives me an awkward smile. I had a growth spurt two years ago. For some reason, Dimitri starts rolling up his sweater to expose his stomach, throwing me for a loop. Is he gonna strip? Mm. See? Stretch marks, he says, and points a finger at his side. There are several thin pinkish lines on the side of his waist. Oh, you're right. You didn't need to show me that. It's fine. I punch over, lowering my head to get a better look at the stretch marks. They're still pink, so they're not that old. I guess even guys can get stretch marks for growing too fast. I never really thought about it. Now that I'm this close to his skin, I can tell his stomach is nicely toned, so much that I can see his defined abs. 
I didn't expect that. Does he work out? I used to think Dimitri was just someone who liked to stay indoors and hated physical activity. My fingers reach out to his stomach. This is definitely not from someone who hates working out. <sighs> Suddenly, my view is obstructed when Dimitri rolls down his sweater again and I pull back my fingers. He diverts his eyes away from me, a pinkish hue colouring his cheeks. Tennis, he says meekly. I play tennis. I stand up straight, a bit confused. Dimitri looks down at the floor. He seems to have an aversion for looking me in the eye. You were looking at my abs, he trails off. Oh, my cheeks flush red. I mean, I wasn't really, I was, um, only wondering. Yeah. I look like a fool stumbling over my words like this. I can't believe I wanted to touch his abs as well, and he caught me staring at them. I can't believe he actually worked out to get these. Good on him. I compose myself and look him in the eye with a smile. I didn't realize playing tennis would make you look like... I point at his stomach. That. He gives a small shake of his head. It doesn't particularly, but tennis is a good workout, so it lowered my body fat enough and combined with my growth spurt, here I am. Yes, there he is, a whole new Dimitri. I feel like you've changed so much and I haven't at all since the last time we saw each other, I openly muse. Last time I saw Dimitri, he was a little taller than me and still a bit boyish in his face. Compared to me, three years ago, I'm still pretty much the same. I don't feel any different either. <clears throat> That's not true, he suddenly exclaims. I raise my eyebrows at his sudden protest. You you went after your dream. Things are definitely not the same as they were back then. Dimitri gives me a reassuring smile, and I feel myself grow at ease at the sight of it. He's cute the way he wants to cheer me up. He leans against the window frame, looking outside with his azure blue eyes. I mean, look at this place. It's yours. That's fantastic. We don't need the sexy music anymore. Like the, This is like the getting heated music. I feel myself grow a little bashful with his compliments like this, as if I'm some kind of superwoman who accomplished the most extraordinary task. Well, I've got to thank my late grandmother for this, I explain. She's the one that left behind an inheritance large enough for me to purchase this boutique. Still, you made it happen. Don't sell yourself short. Thanks, I guess. We stare at each other with smiles on our faces for a little while. Anyways, that's the tour of the house. The contact is downstairs. Are you sure you want to live here? Dimitri nods with a determined look on his face. Definitely. Alright, let's go sign the contract then. Well, that was the first chapter. Full out. Impress of the link. Within a couple of days, Dimitri has shipped all of his belongings from his parents' house to mine. The once empty spare room, yeah, bedroom, now looks like a boy's room. Ow. Because of the Zelda poster? Because of the blue chair? I don't really understand. I helped with moving, although Dimitri kept taking boxes off my hands and carrying it himself, saying that I don't need to travel myself. Dimitri's first night was mostly spent unpacking his things and then collapsing from exhaustion. The next day he went to his college and it wasn't as weird as I thought it would be. What with everything going on, Dimitri hasn't had the time yet to show off his cooking skills. I'll admit I'm really looking forward to home-cooked meals from Dimitri. I remember that the last time I saw him we were baking a cake together and he was so precise about everything it was kind of amazing. I'm sure that even when it's not a cake, whatever Dimitri will make will be gold. Tomorrow will be the official opening of my store so I want to celebrate it with Sarah and Dimitri tonight. I asked Dimitri if he could cook for me and he said he'd gladly do so. I mean, I understand you want to make Sarah and him get along, but she's just mean, real mean to him. Later that evening, Sarah finally drops by. You know they say like the sins of the father? It's like the sins of the brother. Hi, she greets me from the front entrance. Hey Sarah, come on in. Sarah sniffs the air and she makes a delightful noise. What is that smell? It smells delicious. I grin at her and nod my head in agreement. I know, it's Dimitri's cooking. That boy, she asks, he can cook. Most definitely he can. He cleans, too. Valky, did you hire yourself a living maid? I blink at Sarah. She does make a good point there. In exchange for getting to live here cheaply, Dimitri is supposed to help with household chores such as cleaning and cooking. When I put it in those terms, I guess it does sound like a living maid. I shake my head. No, don't be silly. I get money from him, not the other way around. That only makes it sound like you're exploiting him instead. Shut up and come inside. Be nice to Dimitri. 
Sarah and I make our way inside and into the living room. Dimitri greets us, holding a wooden spoon in one hand, still in the middle of cooking. Good evening, Sarah, he greets her politely. Cat boy, she replies as usual. Dimitri gives her a wry smile, and he looks over at me with those sad puppy dog eyes, as if he's asking me if Sarah really does hate him. I sigh loudly. Sarah, if you want to eat Dimitri's food, you're going to have to treat him like a human being, not a cat. Now quit it. Dimitri simply smiles coyly at that. Huh. Fine, she scoffs. But we'll see if you're a better roommate for her than I am, Sarah mumbles menacingly. Uh, I roll my eyes. That's really the only thing she cares about, isn't it? She's jealous Dimitri is my roommate. I simply wanted the both of them to get along. <laughs> Anyways, dinner will be served shortly. Please have a seat, Dimitri announces. Well, you don't have to tell me twice. Me and Sarah sit at the dining table and await our dinner. It really does smell nice in my first... <laughs> it really does smell nice in my house right now. All I did was ask Dimitri to cook a nice dinner for us to celebrate the opening day tomorrow. I gave him some money and he did everything all by himself. It's only his second day here as well, and yet he's familiarized himself pretty well. It's a little impressive the way he's so put together and takes charge. I have to say, I never expected this from Dimitri, who always seemed so meek and reserved back when he was younger. I guess he became a little more reliable now that he's older. Finally, Dimitri comes walking into the dining room with two plates in his hands. For you, my lady, says Dimitri as he places the plate in front of me. I laugh at him. You're going to address me as lady now? Dimitri looks a bit sheepish. Well, you are the lady of the house. You get first dibs. Yeah, well, I want next dip. Give me, I'm starving. Sarah interjects. Yeah. As Dimitri serves Sarah and himself, I finally get to look at the amazing dish in front of me. It's super fancy. It looks like it's been made by an expert. There's a large chunk of steak covered in, red, in a red sauce, some green asparagus, and roasted potatoes. He even splattered some of the sauce around the plate to create the image of a bow. Ooh. Smells as delicious as it looks. But most importantly, what do they teach him in baking class? Isn't he supposed to learn how to bake pastries? I'm looking this up. What is a pastry? Shit. Wait, 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 wait. No, it, what I should ask is, is a cake a pastry? All pastries are cakes, but not all cakes are pastries. Um, the main difference lies in the fact that cakes involve many ingredients that are nutritious too, while pastries only use a few ingredients. Yeah, I think, I think this is um, not correct, but I could be wrong again because I'm not an expert. My my brother is the expert. He, he loves to bake. Um, This is like getting a dinner at a five-star restaurant. Dimitri, this is amazing, I say in wonder. Dimitri finally sits down as well. Well, you did say you wanted to celebrate something, Dimitri says with a small chuckle. But you were majoring in baking. But you were majoring in pastries. <laughs> I ask him. Oh, I am. Please don't think I'm some professional sous chef or anything like that. I followed a strict recipe to get this result. He closes his eyes and mumbles. I was trying to impress you, maybe. Well, thanks for going all out, then. But the important question is, does it taste good? Sarah points out. She really wants to rain on his parade, doesn't she? I take my knife and slowly cut the first piece off my steak and bring the slightly rare flesh towards my mouth. Mmm, this is good. Seeing my delighted face, Dimitri lets out a relieved sounding sigh, like he's been on guard all this time. Maybe he's been really anxious about getting this meal perfect. Dimitri, please don't tell me you're going to cook like this every single time, I ask, sounding perhaps a bit, a tad bit too hopeful. <laughs> Dimitri nervously shakes his head. I don't think I'd be able to handle that kind of stress. <laughs> he takes in a deep breath. No, this is a special occasion. My cooking skills are actually pretty mediocre. He's trying to downplay his own skills. In no way is this meal mediocre. Dimitri is way too modest. Okay, fine, you win this round, Sarah says begrudgingly. I will admit I can only cook ramen. Sarah, it's not a competition. It is. <laughs> Dimitri simply chuckles at Sarah enjoying himself. Then there's this smug smile on his face for the briefest moment. Then I guess I win. Dimitri. He's fueling Sarah's fire. I can't believe these two just don't get along. I sigh heavily as I try to enjoy Dimitri's meal.
Later that night, when we're all finished and cleaning up, Sarah has to go home. Now, just because I'm gone doesn't mean you can suddenly put the moves on Valky. She wants Dimitri. That's none of your business, Sarah. Ugh, not a child. Dimitri stands there with a towel in his hand, mouth dropping open in complete and utter shock. Sarah, it's just Dimitri. He's not going to do anything. Nothing is going to happen. He's my ex's little brother, for God's sake. You hear that? Sarah's smirking. Little brother, she says while stressing the words. Dimitri huffs. Isn't it bedtime for you now? He responds, narrowing his eyes at Sarah. It's like I'm in the middle of a wall with these two. I rub my head and furrow my eyebrows. Yes, children should be in bed by now, no? Valky, why don't you tuck him in? I have a better idea. Why don't I kick you out? I grumble and I start pushing Sarah out towards the back door. Mm. All right, all right. Good luck with the opening tomorrow. Let me know how it goes, okay? Good night. Sarah finally bids her good night and leaves. Goodbye. She's always way too aggro, but she's even more aggro for, like, no reason in this one. I head back to the kitchen to see Dimitri drying the dishes. Yo, let me do the washing up. It's nice to have someone cook for me and also clean up after themselves. I'm usually too tired to do the dishes after cooking. Me too, but I still do them anyway. I stand next to Dimitri holding a towel in my hand as well, and I quietly take a soapy plate from the drying rack and dry it off. Well, this is all very domestic, isn't it? Been... I was just making sure that my webcam isn't picking up any noise. Dimitri stops for a second to look at me, then silently continues. Seems Sarah actually does have an issue with you, I decide to say. I hope he doesn't hate her, she's my best friend after all. That much was obvious. I think she means well, it's just how she shows affection. She has a funny way of showing that. Agreed, she tends to bully the ones she loves. She's definitely teased me a lot during college as well, or whenever we were doing one of her photo shoots, she'd mercilessly tease me about looking good on camera. I guess I wouldn't mind being bullied a little by the person I love. Dimitri says softly with a sh slight shrug of his shoulders. My eyes dart over towards him, curious curiosity sparking inside of me. Is he perhaps... Don't tell me, you're a masochist. Dimitri promptly drops the glass he was holding and it splashes back into the sink filled with water. He quickly whips his head to face me, eyes wide in shock. What? His voice squeaks. Slowly, he starts to blush as well. I'm not, he grumbles. I laugh at him, playfully tapping his arm with my hand. Relax, I meant personality-wise. You're the kind that enjoys it when you get teased by friends, no? <laughs> Dimitri lets out a nervous chuckle. <laughs> I guess so? I mean, probably less with friends. I was thinking... He looks at me. If it was a girl I like. Speaking of liking people, that reminds me. Does Dimitri have a girlfriend right now? I can't imagine she'd be okay with him moving in with me. Hey, Dimitri. Are you in a relationship at the moment? Dimitri silently picks up the glass he dropped and starts drying it off again. Says nothing. Oh, he's turning red. Why do you want to know? He stutters. Well, I'm curious if you have a girlfriend or not, I answer honestly. Beneath the long plucks of hair, I can see his ears are also burning red. That's cute. He's so embarrassed. No, he says in a deep voice. I do not. In any case, I breathe a sigh of relief. Good, I say. You gave him the wrong idea. Huh? Hmm? Dimitri looks confused, but there's also a slight smile on his face. Why is that good? I figured if you had a girlfriend, she wouldn't exactly be okay with you moving in with me. I know I would get really jealous. Oh. He presses his lips into a thin line. No, you don't need to worry about that. He gives me a smile. I'm single. Hmm, maybe Dimitri has never been in a relationship before. That could also be a possibility. I'm not about to ask, though. That's a bit of an awkward question to pose. Then again, Dimitri has grown into his looks. I can imagine the girls his age would find him handsome and want to date him. Besides, he's sweet and can cook a lovely meal. Definitely boyfriend material. Don't worry. I give him a grin. I'm sure you'll find someone eventually. You want to... You want to know why women find those qualities so attractive in a guy i'll let you know right now and if you are not this type of man don't get offended because i'm not talking about you <laughs> men who don't see cooking and cleaning as their job or they just automatically delegate it to the woman they want a mum they want a mummy we find these kind of guys attractive I know I'm generalizing, but in general. We want someone who knows how to look after themselves, they know how to cook, they know how to wash their own clothes. You know, 
they're, they're not just leaving one mum and going to another one. You know? That's why. That's why we like this. We don't like it for any weird... I mean, maybe there's romantic reasons as well in there, right? It's like, oh my god, he can make me like a dinner. As if a woman making a man a dinner isn't also romantic. Whatever, it's, it's different standards, right? But it's attractive because you can look after yourself. You're not just, yeah, you're not just swapping one mum out for basically another one who also has sex with you. You know? This is this is why we find this attractive, though, and why we don't necessarily- I mean, it's- it's one- I know I'm going off on a massive tangent here, but please bear with me. It's one thing if you didn't have the- necessarily have the means to f figure that stuff out, but like, also, why wouldn't you? I don't really- I'm sure there's some reasons why you wouldn't, but... To me, like, it's so easy to learn. You know? Like, you just- It's not as daunting as you think. I don't know, I don't, I don't like it when people expect everybody else to take care of them, like, all the time. Anyway, that was a massive tangent. I just wanted to give you, an, like, an insight. Maybe. Okay. Don't worry. I gave him all, but just, a, uh, also because I feel kind of awkward because this guy clearly, like, I know I've, I've already played through this route before. I don't remember it, like, fully, but I probably remember this one the most because it was the one I enjoyed the most. Um, but yeah, this guy obviously fucking fancies Valky. Um, and it's so sad because obviously it's so early on that those feelings aren't totally, they aren't reciprocated at all yet, let's just say. Don't worry, I give him a grin. I'm sure you'll find someone eventually. Mm. And I'm sure you will too. I feel myself turning bashful all of a sudden. I haven't been in another relationship since Alex. I've been on dates and such, and I felt myself keeping a distance from them. For some reason, there was this barrier I created that I couldn't overcome and turn those dates into a relationship. As soon as they did something suspicious, like texting someone while on a date with me, I'd end it right there and there. Then and there. I wasn't able to trust them. Hmm, I muse out loud. I'm not so sure. And just saying, her trust issues are completely, like, valid, but it's also not on some new person to help her change them that's on her to change like you you can't really get someone else to fix you you kind of have to fix yourself because especially since you're never going to believe what someone else says not totally anyway if you don't even remotely believe it yourself i'm going off on like a thousand tangents i'm so sorry hmm my muse out loud i'm not so sure dimitri places his tail down on the counter and turns to me with sincere eyes what do you mean by that? I can't quite formulate my own thoughts. I wonder how much Dimitri even knows about my breakup with Alex. I don't know. It's just... Hmm. I pause to think. I find men harder to trust now. Uh. Oh. Dimitri says, realizing what I meant. Uh, what we Realizing what I mean. I guess that makes sense with what happened. Trusting Alex and then finding out he'd been cheating on me for a while. It was quite a shock. A shock I'm still healing from, to be honest. I definitely do not have feelings towards Alex anymore. He can go drown in a river for all I care, but he's left me behind with some emotional scars. There's still good guys out there. I hope you'd still give them a chance, says Dimitri with a serious look in his eyes. Not everyone will ruin your trust. See, he's not being very helpful here, but that's fine. Like, you, she knows this. She doesn't need you to tell her this. She doesn't need you to go, oh, there are good guys out there. Like, she doesn't need to, she doesn't need you to say that. Because... She's not painting them all with the same brush. She just has some bad issues with dudes, okay? This is just like stating the obvious and kind of being defensive at the same time. It's not necessary. I give him a sad smile. I know, plenty of fish in the sea, right? He nods at me. Right. Now that we finally broached this subject, I may as well ask how much Dimitri knows about what happened three years ago. Do you even know what happened between me and your brother? Dimitri nods and picks up his towel again to start drying off the last glass. I don't know the exact details, but I could piece some things together when you wrote in big bold letters the word cheater on his car. Wait, what? Sorry? <clears throat> there was the word cheater painted in white on Alex's car a few days after my birthday. I turned bright red. But that wasn't me. I immediately correct him. That was... That must have been Sarah. Oh god, I didn't realize she did that. I remember Sarah calling for acts of vengeance after she found out about what happened, and one day she came back to the dorms pretty late with a satisfied smile on her face. She wouldn't tell me what she did no matter how many times I asked her, only that he got what he deserved. She said she'd get revenge on him, I didn't realise this was what she meant. 
It was pretty funny. I took a picture of it. He was scrubbing the paint off for days, Dimitri chuckles. I can't help but give him a wry smile as well. Good. At least he suffered a little. I should probably thank Sarah for being an awesome friend the next time I see her. Dimitri suddenly looks dejected. Is this why Sarah dislikes me? Because I'm Alexander's brother? It makes a good point. Well, Sarah was already wary of him when he was dressed up in a cat costume. She became even more antagonistic towards him when she found out he was Alex's brother. Not sure, maybe, but she doesn't really dislike you. Or at least, I think she doesn't dislike him. She seems to be having fun toying around with him more than anything. I don't care if Sarah does, as long as you're the one that doesn't dislike me because of my brother. I raise my eyebrows in surprise. No, no, I could never. Dimitri has been so sweet to me, of course I wouldn't dislike him due to what happened with Alex. I mean, sometimes when I look at him, it reminds me of Alex since they look alike, but I could never hate him. You're too cute to hate, I say, I say with a chuckle. Dimitri freezes on the spot. You, he repeats, his cheeks now steadily gaining colour. He quickly hides his embarrassed face with the towel in his hand so that I can't see the glaring red blush on his face. That's too adorable. Aw, did that make you shy? I tease him. He sinks his face into the towel even deeper, and this time turns his entire body away from me. Uh. D don't tease me, he utters. I creep up behind him with a grin. But why? I thought you said you liked being teased. I whisper in his ear. This time, Dimitri yelps out loud. He makes a spectacular mad dash out of the kitchen. Dimitri? I call after him, stunned at his reaction. There's no response. Dimitri... I yell out once more, unable to contain my laughter following soon after. I'm sorry, come back. Rest in peace, bro. Hey, sorry about the tangents. I'll see you in the next one.